Okay, so we're here with a HP 410B. And uh, boy, I've just been waiting a long time to get my hands on one of these meters. And I picked this one up on Craigslist and the fellow was nice enough to ship it to me. So uh, you can see that I've got it torn apart a little bit here. One of the issues is it's got junk on the inside of the glass for the meter. And uh, here's the meter, a little bit of browning on that meter. I might try and wash it off. We'll see if we can or not. And then up here, uh, this is uh, this the rest of the replacements we're going to have to do. We really have to do these first uh, four resistors here. They're uh, quite a ways out of tolerance, uh, much further than you would uh, want to have in your piece of equipment. And also I'm going to replace this capacitor right here. And we'll do that from the bottom. So this is kind of the beginning of the teardown here. And uh, we'll get to work on the meter face first and uh, try and kind of pretty it up a little bit. Because this meter is in such nice shape other than that. Uh, I think we'll just try and uh, really make it pretty. So the glass on this cleaned up real nice. It had something behind it. It almost looks like it may be a cigarette film. I'm not sure. But it cleaned up really good and it looks like the meter is going to clean up real nice to this white face. So you really got to be careful here because we don't want to rub off any numbers and just want to kind of get this whatever this orangish grime is off here. And no solvents. This is just water we're using here. To take that meter off you need to take the four screws out of the front. Then you need to take these three screws out of the back. So uh, I'll come back after I get done cleaning this meter face. Okay, so we've got the meter glass and the meter cleaned up about as well as we can do. Uh, that tobacco is really hard to get off those white meter faces, but that's okay. It's plenty readable, and I think that I can live with it there. Okay, so we replaced some power supply resistors here. And also the uh, power supply filter capacitor here. This has got a standoff on it, by the way. I did not put this capacitor over this capacitor. Never do that. Uh, this has got a nice little standoff on it. And uh, we preserved the, uh, used the ground on this one, but uh, put a standoff on the positive and put this, uh, put this capacitor in here. So... It's uh, calibrated up and it's doing pretty good, but uh, there's something that I need to tell you guys about here just a little bit. So let me get this thing turned over so that I can explain it. Okay, so let's have a look at a kind of an interesting issue with this uh, HP 410B. This is the AC probe that has a diode tube in it. That diode tube this particular one is the EA53. It requires 6.3 volts. The 6.3 volts is supplied to that tube via this outside shield of this cable. And the ground return is on the inside shield. Then of course the hot wire is the hot wire here. So the issue is this cord had been uh, broken here and the AC voltage was shorting out on the ground return. So I had to cut this off a little bit shorter and I'm going to recreate this piece of uh, stripping here. We'll take one wire from here, run it over to the AC uh, supply line, take the wire from the ground, run it over here to the ground, then we'll take this hot wire here and run it to the hot. So we're going to do some uh, soldering onto here and then some protecting of those wires. Okay, we've got the first shield connected here. This is the one that goes to the AC line. Now it's on to the second shield. This is the one for the ground return. Okay, so here's the the uh, little plate that holds the probes put back together again and all of the wires have been attached and uh, 
So you take a look over here and we've got the AC line right here. Got the hot wire for the AC probe and then the ground for it. Here we have the hot for the DC probe. Over here we have resistance and uh, right here we have the, uh, the ground wire. So it's uh, put a little bit of hot glue in here for some strain relief because the wires are a little bit smaller than what it was holding on to. They had put a uh, they had put a plastic piece under there before, so put a little bit of hot glue in there for some strain relief. Okay, so here's a look at the back side of that uh, connector. One of the things you want to make sure of, the shield on this wire is so thick that it shorts against the case on the other side. So what we have to do is take a look down the line here and make sure that we don't have any shorts. Uh, and particularly this one right here because it's the AC line that uh, goes out. So there we go. We managed to shield it. But boy, I'll tell you what, that, that uh, back plate wants to uh, cut through that wire right into that shield. And that shield is so thick. So take a look. at Here's the back plate here. That back plate wants to cut into that wire, so be careful of that. Make sure that uh, make sure that uh, that doesn't cut through there. Uh, check your resistance before you put it back on the voltmeter. So since this voltmeter has a bridge in it, and the uh, bridge is run by two 12AU7s, we want two good 12AU7s that are well matched between the two triodes, and I uh, happened to get a hold of some tubes that a guy stole out of an old Baldwin organ and they're, uh, they're Raytheon uh, 12AU7s and you can see this one at about 91% on one triode and then if we switch over to the other triode let it, let it get uh, warmed up over there but uh, once this switches over to this other triode real good, and we'll take a look for shorts too. No shorts. So that's all good news. Now, look at that, right up at 91. So here's a what I think is a pretty well-matched uh, triode, or at least as close as I can test it. I don't have a Hickok. I'm going to find two of those. I, li I love these Raytheon tubes. They're, they're built real solid, and uh, I'm going to put those in there, and hopefully we'll come up with a real nicely balanced bridge circuit in this voltmeter. Well, there they are. Two uh, nicely matched up uh, internally, both of the triodes inside and matched up uh, between each other, and those two tubes are going in this voltmeter. Okay, let's take a look at how I got led down the garden path. So this meter kept on uh, going dead when you hit the 30 volt AC range. But the DC range worked fine. So I start looking through these range resistors because I'm thinking, well, gee, it's got to be in there. But nope, there's no problem there. Then I start looking through the AC compensation resistors here and I'm thinking it's got to be there and nope no problem there then all of a sudden I kind of get a little bit smarter here and I find out that on the one volt AC range no problem to the meter three volt AC range no problem to the meter 10 volt AC range no problem to the meter suddenly out here at the 30 volt AC range this resistor this variable resistor for uh, adjusting the calibration on the AC range is open and so none of the ranges from 30 volts on up work because it's open between here and here and that's the only path to the negative side of the meter so that's uh boy did I get led down the garden path. I'm I'm over here checking all of this stuff over and over again, thinking there's a contact open on the wafer switch or 
a resistor open or this or that. And sure enough, the problem is this uh, resistor right here on the uh, 30 volt, on the 30 volt calibration range, that resistor is open. So it's probably just because it's dirty. I'll go down and try and clean it up and see if that does it. And if it doesn't, then I'll replace it. But I just wanted to warn you guys, uh, if you ever see this meter measuring AC fine on the one volt range, the three volt range, the 10 volt range, then all of a sudden it goes dead at 30 volts. By the way, the same thing could happen at 100 volts AC. Uh, the exact same thing could happen. Just have an open uh, calibration resistor over there and all of a sudden your 300 volt range doesn't work because the 100 volt uh, resistor is open or your 100 volt range and your 30 volt range don't uh, don't work because your 30 volt uh, calibration is open so uh, be careful of that it's just something uh, I learned the very hard way well here you go it's uh, calibrated up as good as I can get it here what we're looking at right now is we're looking at uh, one volt on the 10 volt range you're gonna get some parallax out of this uh, camera but here we go down to the 3 volt range and it's reading dead on at 1 volt and go up to the 1 volt range and it's reading dead on at 1 volt so we've got a, a pretty good deal going on here even on the 30 volt range which is this lower range right here we're reading 1 volt reading 1 volt on the 10 volt range 1 volt on the 3 volt range 1 volt on the 1 volt range. So that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to come back here in a minute. We're going to take a look at the AC. And we're going to see why this meter is so special here. In just about a second. Okay, so here we're looking at 3 volts. And it's at 100 cycles AC. 3 volts RMS. Now we're going to go up to 20,000 cycles per second notice what happened to the fluke and notice that the HP is still reading 3 volts now we're gonna go up to 500,000 cycles per second notice the fluke it's all the way down let me uh, get a little it's all the way down at 0.16 volts RMS, yet the HP sits there at uh, 3 volts RMS. Look at that. That's uh, how high a frequency this AC voltmeter is. I'm going to go up to a megahertz and just take a look and see what it does. There's a megahertz, and here sits the HP at 3 volts, and here sits the fluke at 0.16. 092. Now, this isn't a fair comparison because the fluke isn't supposed to read high frequency, but I'm just showing you what it is that this, uh, this HP is capable of here. That's a pretty high frequency to just still be sitting there right dead on 3 volts, you know. So, uh, anyway, that's one of the big advantages of this meter, and that's going to probably wrap up this uh, series on this thing uh, we might come back and take a look at what we've done to it okay so let's take a look at what we've done here so uh, replaced R51 because it was out of tolerance replaced R52 the 33 ohm just wanted to make sure that the filaments are okay here and uh, doing well and both of those resistors were quite a ways out then uh, also replaced, let me see here if I can find it. It's in a different spot here, just a minute. Let's take a look here. Here it is. Replaced R34 right here on the zero adjust. It had uh, gone considerably out of tolerance. We also replaced C10, 
this capacitor right here just because it was uh, just too old then what we did was we came in rewired the probe and uh, the situation here is is that this wire right here is really the outside shield of the uh, cable that goes to the uh, AC probe and uh, we ironed out that probe and made it so that that shield right there wasn't shorted to ground on the uh, ground shield for the probe and then basically we rewired that entire spot where the the probe comes uh, where the probe is on that plate that uh, screws onto the bottom of the meter also put a new uh, ground wire on the uh, probe and uh, then cleaned all of the uh, all of the range switches and the power switch the uh, the uh, switch that switches between AC DC and ohms and then uh, we also found this open uh, R36 the 50 ohm uh, potentiometer for the 30 volt AC range so it cleaned all of these potentiometers because after that I trusted none of them so as far as work left to uh, go goes one of the things that I think I might like to do at some point on this meter is come back in and balance up this entire bridge circuit here just by putting in some precision resistors for this 680 270 270 680 3.9 megs and then the two 500 Ks. I'd just like to put some precision resistors in there, I think, at some point in time, just to make sure that uh, I get everything just as balanced as balanced can be. So anyway, that will conclude the, uh, the uh, refurbishment of this uh, HP 410B uh, vacuum tube voltmeter which has super, super low loading on the DC line. Just will not load a circuit. It's just so, uh, got such a nice high input impedance, super high input impedance. And also this AC probe that's capable of uh, such a wide band of measuring RMS voltage. So that ought to do it.